Hey friends, Miss Manning here. I'm super excited because I'm going to share a new story that I just read for my first time this week. And the book is called Maybelle's Suitcase. Now this book belongs to one of my neighbors named Beth. And Beth is a grown up just like Miss Manning, but we both enjoy reading children's books. So today, friends, let's start by taking a peek inside the jacket and get a little warmed up with what we might see in the story. Maybell is 108 years old and lives in a tree house close to her friends, the birds. There, she designs and makes hats, which she sells to the little shop in town. And there she creates the entry that she's sure will win the town's annual hat contest. The day before the contest, Maybelle's friends fly south for the winter. All but one, that is. Binkle, afraid to leave home for the first time, wants to take his belongings, and he asks Maybelle to lend him a suitcase. Maybelle would do anything for Binkle but she knows he can't fly with a heavy suitcase. How can she persuade him to leave his things behind? So friends, we're gonna have to listen up and see what she's able to do to help her friend. Maybelle's Suitcase. And this story is written by Trisha Tusa. And also she illustrated the pictures. Here we have a dedication page, and the book is dedicated for Maybelle. So there must have been a character that this book was written about. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Let's get started. Maybelle was 108 years old and had spent the last eight years living happily among the treetops. A fascination with birds had inspired her to build her own tree house. Wow, look at how cool that is. I would like to live there too. Maybelle made hats and sold them to a little shop in town. For the moment, she had put aside her work and was adding the finishing touch to a special project, her entry in the town's annual hat contest. It's a fancy looking hat, pretty cool. The hat was finished and Maybelle was very, very pleased. Out on her porch, she relaxed. From up above, she heard a chorus of goodbyes. Winter was on its way and her neighbors were headed south. Her neighbors being the birds, of course. There was a knock at her door. It was young Bingle. Maybelle, may I borrow a suitcase? He asked. I promise to return it in a few months. Now, Pumpkin, why on earth do you want a suitcase? I can't leave home without my belongings. Maybelle watched Binkle fill the suitcase. In went an oak branch forked at one end, some round rocks and a small pile of dirt. He added a few daisies and gardenias and an armful of elm leaves. Lots of treasures for a bird. I'm ready to fly south now, Maybelle, Finkel sighed sadly. I sure will miss you. Cheer up, Binkle. You'll be back. Besides, traveling is fun. Finkel gave Maybelle a big hug. Over and over, he tried to fly up and away. He tried. Hmm. Hmm. But each time, he landed flat on his back. You silly bird, said Maybelle. You'd be a lot better off if you'd let go of this load. That's a good idea. Leave 
get behind? Absolutely not. I couldn't. Hmm. Well, at least come inside and rest for a while while I work on my project, she said. What project? I'm making a hat for a big contest tomorrow, but I can't find certain things I need. Like what? For one, a handsome oak branch forked at one end. That's funny. I thought she was done with her hat. Changed her mind, I guess. Maybell sighed. Oh, I just don't know what to do. Maybe I can help, said Finkel. And away he flew. Finkel returned. I couldn't find the branch you described, but he reached into the suitcase. Will this do? Perfect, said Maybell. Now, if only I could find some shiny round rocks and rich brown earth. I wonder where they'll find that. I happen to have some inside the suitcase, Binkle exclaimed, surprised. Oh, Binkle, thank you. Is there something else I can help you with? I need some daisies and gardenias. No problem, be back in a flash. And if you find some elm leaves, I greatly appreciate them. Maybell called out. Right, said Binkle. I'm seeing a little bit of a pattern here. Binkle returned almost immediately his wings empty. Couldn't you find the flowers? Maybell asked. Well, said Pinkle, it seems I have just what you needed here in the suitcase. You can return everything to me after the contest and then I'll be on my way. Binkle, you've been such a help. Now I can begin. Oopsies. Binkle watched in awe while Maybell created the hat. When she had finished, he cried, Bravo, a true masterpiece. But something's missing, Maybell said. May I make a suggestion? Binkle asked timidly. Timidly is another word for like shy. It's kind of shy to ask. And I think I have a prediction for what Binkle might suggest. Carefully, he pulled his nest out of the suitcase and placed it at the top of the hat. Inside the nest lay the shell from which Binkle had been born. Oh, here we see it here. In silence, Mabel and Binkle stared proudly at the sight before them. How will I ever wear it? whispered Maybell. Easy, said Binkle. I've got the answer right here. Ooh. The next day they arrived and what a happy day it was. Maybell did not win the contest. However, the judges invented a new prize for Maybell and Binkle. They received an award for the most original hat. And I agree, that hat is pretty original. And then we have Binkle helping out. Furthermore, the hat was put on permanent display at the town museum to be preserved and honored always. As Maybell and Binkle headed back to the treehouse, a cool gust of air swept by. Binkle shuddered. I can't take this cold. I really must move on. I know. I'll miss you, Maybelle said. I'll miss you too, Maybelle, but I'll be back. I think it's going to be easier for Binkle to fly without that suitcase. 
Finkel left that afternoon. Maybell knew he was taking a detour to get one last proud look through the museum window. Once alone, Maybell placed the hat that she had originally made for the contest on her head. Maybe next year, she said softly. And that, my friends, is the end of the story. Now, I do love this story about friendship, how Maybell was able to help her friend, and her friend was also able to help her. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll hopefully see you all soon. Goodbye, friends.